I think a lot of people have been looking forward to this printer combo, not because it's the biggest or the fastest, but because it comes with the Creality CFS. That's Creality's multicolor system. And prior to this, you could only get it with the K2 printer. Now, don't get me wrong, that printer is great, but it is massive and heavy. You need two people to move it around your room and it'll take up a good chunk of your workspace. This printer is a reasonable size for a reasonable price and I think that'll appeal to a lot of people. So this is not a full review, but I will be giving a bit of my initial impressions at the end of the video. This is the Creality High Combo and today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing of it. So I'm just gonna dive right in and open this up. And then my, my first thought on this printer is, to me it kinda looks like an Ender 3 V3 with the CFS combo that comes off the K2. Now I have the K2 at home, so I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot to say about the CFS combo. And I also have an Ender 3 V3 Plus, so this should be pretty familiar territory for me. So let's dive right in. So right on top, it looks like we have the CFS, that's the multicolor system. So we'll open this up first. So it feels like it's a metal case on the bottom there with a plastic top. Feels pretty good quality material so far. Looks like there's a few things tucked away into the packaging on the side here. We have some tubes. These look like the connectors to connect the CFS to the printer. And looks like this is where our filament's gonna pass through before it heads into the printer. So it's nice they have instructions right on the top of the box how to remove the printer easily. And here's the printer here. So first I'm just gonna pull these out, get a nice grip on it. Place that gently down. So now that's everything that was in the box. I'm just gonna start taking a look at what comes in here. So usual filament they include. We have our power cord. All this stuff looking really familiar if you've ever bought Creality before. You got the instructions, which I will take a look at because I haven't assembled one of these printers before, not exactly like this. And then, you know, all our usual little things, our tools, our nozzle, socket, grease, you know, you've been here before probably, you, you know how that goes. I'm not exactly sure what, the, actually, I think this is a filament guide. That's kind of what this looks like. So we'll have to use that later. Then here we have the spool holder. And that's all there is for that section. So for now, I'm just gonna put the CFS to the side because first we have to build this printer. That looks pretty simple to assemble. It's really just attaching the gantry onto the base plate here. So I'm just gonna start by cutting off these straps, removing the foam from the sides. Actually, I kind of like this. The screen just swings out, which is nice. You don't have to plug anything in. It's just right there, tucked away nicely. When you're not using it, you can tuck it away so it's not getting damaged. So right off the bat, I kind of like that. So first, just move the plate out of the way so you have access to the holes here. And then all you do is just slot this in. Make sure these aren't being pinched. And then you're just gonna screw in the four bolts here. And before you tighten it down, just make sure you pull off this plastic around it. And now you can screw the four bolts. And then you're gonna screw in two bolts, one on each side here. And then, so all you have to do now is plug in a few wires here for the motors. And then you have to put these plastic covers on. So I think I'm just gonna tuck down the spare wire here to make it easier to cover. I think that's what they intend you to do here. And then that fits over nicely. And now just plug in the x-axis motor wire. And then the spool holder, interesting design, no screws involved. It looks like it just clips over the top here. So I'm just gonna I'll put that on first. And then this just clips over and then snaps closed on the back. And this filament guide just slots in here and has a small screw to hold it in place. There is a camera on the side here. Just make sure you move this plastic tab out of the way so it can see. 
and now we can just put the bed on. And you know, sometimes I get nostalgic about the old days of assembling the Ender 3s, where you have a million different parts, until I actually get to building a printer. And I appreciate how easy it is these days. Anyone can do this. And I love how that's introduced this to a whole new level of people. So now we're gonna connect the CFS to the printer. So we're gonna start off by plugging this connection in here. And that's gonna plug into the printer. And then the other connector is gonna go from the CFS to the buffer. This is where the filament's gonna pass through before it goes to the printer. Then you're gonna connect the PTFE tube from the back of the CFS, just like this. This is gonna go into the buffer here. Now there's four slots here because you can have up to four CFS units on this. And then you're just gonna take the one that will go from the buffer and this one will go in to the nozzle. So it took me longer than I care to admit to figure out how this buffer attaches to the side of the printer. I was looking for screw holes because that's how it is on the K2, but their solution for this one, just double-sided tape. Now just to show you again how it should look when it's all said and done, we have a connector from the CFS to the printer, from the CFS to the buffer, then we have a tube from the CFS to the bottom of the buffer, and then a tube from the top of the buffer into the head. This combo doesn't come with any filament beyond this small spool here, so I'm gonna use some stuff I have here. First off, I have a bit of the Hyper PLA from Creality, the official Creality. I'm gonna try some Bamboo Lab filament. I have this Matte Ice Blue from R3D. And from Polymaker, I have some PLA on a cardboard spool, and it should be able to handle all these spool types. And before you load your CFS, just make sure you remove the plastic off these desiccant packs. Now, if you're not using the official Creality filament with the RFID tag in it, you're going to have to manually enter the filament you use. So you see the first slot is the Creality PLA, which was read by the RFID, so it automatically went in. In the second slot, I've already done this, but all you have to do is go in here, edit, you can select the type. So I did generic PLA, and then it knew the nozzle temp and everything, and then I just selected the color, and that's all there is to it. You do it for each one, and then you're ready to go. So if you've used the multicolor system before, you know it produces a bit of waste. And this one, it just shoots it off to the side. So the first thing I did was print this little waste basket, which is included on the files on the printer. And it turned out pretty good. It printed very fast. The finish was quite nice. The first layer was exceptional for a printer of this price. And overall, pretty happy with that print. So after that, I printed off just a Benchy, just a multicolored Benchy, just to try out the multicolor system to see how it works. And it printed off quick as well. This one just involves simple color changes at layers. There was no complex color changing in this one. So it was really quick and it turned out quite nice and the system worked. So that was my first print. So from there, I decided to go with something a little more complex. I printed off this little flexible cat model. Now the most difficult part of this print is right along the middle here where the eyes are green and blue. So when you're in these layers, you're printing four colors at once. So I was able to fully test out the multicolor system and it printed very well. You can see there is no color bleeding into the white. 
There's no blue drifting into it or green or the brown from the other layers. So we haven't had the printer for that long and these are just the first few prints I did. I will be doing some more complex prints later, but for now this is all I've done and so far it's been very good. So at the start of the video, before I actually got my hands on it, I kind of compared it to the Ender 3 and in some ways it is quite similar. It is a bed slinger. It is around the same price point, but there are a few differences and I just wanted you to know that. You know, some of the, the rail systems a little bit different. So don't go in thinking this is just exactly an Ender 3. This is its own thing. If you've been looking for a cheaper alternative to the K2 and want that multicolor system, this is the one for you. We'll be making more videos on this high combo in the future, so if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like.